What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to this episode. So part two of this match, part one was in episode 15. He bangs it home. You might be wondering why I'm not doing a live com and continuing on this match with the live com with my, with my face up in the corner. But I wanted to kind of have a chat. So every maybe like seven or eight episodes, I want to have a bit of a catch up with you guys to get your opinions on... You know, just have a bit of a catch-up. Get your opinions on how the game is playing for ye. And talk about a couple of things. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The stuff that I'm enjoying. The stuff that I'm not enjoying. Um, and in this game, right, I had gone from, you know, 2-0 two, two up to 2-2 two, to two all. Um, and it just, it, it was just one of these weird games, right? I have no complaints about it. I will be complaining in a couple of minutes' time um, about a game that I did play. Um, but I have no complaints about this game. I mean, if, I, if I'm going to lose a game, right? Like, this is a brilliant goal from him. I make, make uh, missed, missed the tackle with Vieira and he punishes me. And straight back up the other end, I get a chance here where nine times out of ten, I'm slotting this home. You know, brilliant move, turn back inside, and I just undercook, and it's a brilliant save. That should have been three all, and I think if I had scored that goal there, I would have went on and won this game, because you can see here that I just started making a lot of, you know, mistakes. So I got intercepted there too slow on the ball, win it back here with Diaz, and unusually for me, you know, I don't usually get caught in possession like that. I lose the ball back again. And when you are playing against a good player, I mean, make the block here that's a very good piece of defending there but unfortunately it was just one of those games he gets another chance i clear the ball again but it was that type of game you know where i'm on the counter attack again with diaz i'm running i'm running i'm running i'm running into into kind of an area that i think i can get attack on i spread it out really wide here i can see the space on the width i haven't gone away from playing my game i always try to play wide but then it's a big dodgy touch uh from neymar here again with romario these are the type of touches i mean i don't know know what happened there i was keeping a close control and he just decided to just tip it off his his big toe and um yeah i mean it was just kind of like this summed up the day really um it was just like my defending was as good as i possibly could i intercepted it once twice nearly three times and it just happens to fall to him right in his lap and he just bangs it before i can even react but I've no real complaints about a game like this, right? People will probably say, yeah, you know, I was screwed or whatever. I don't think that this was being, me being screwed. I'll show you a game where I felt I was being screwed. More so because I literally had input lag and I could do nothing in terms of the responsiveness. My players weren't passing the ball. My buttons weren't working. Like another day here, I would have banged that in and it just wouldn't shoot for me. I was getting input, input delay. So I want to ask you guys, are you getting that there? I mean, I know when you're saying, you're looking back at that clip and saying, I just need to shoot with Romario. <laughs> I'm, trust me, I'm playing the way I always play and I'm shooting and pressing the buttons the same way. Here with Monayin, like I turn back in. That's my mistake. That's my mistake there. But with the shot with Romario, and you'll see in a couple of games coming up where I actually analyze it, um, it was, you know, it wasn't me. So that leaves us with the same amount of points, I think, in Division 3. Obviously, check out Divi or check out Episode 15 if you guys have missed that. But we are in a, an okay position. We've got three games left. We've won all our games pretty much up to that. So that loss isn't going to affect us too much in Division 3. I think we will get into Division 2 with the next game, which you will see, um, hopefully. But yeah, I just wanted to ask you guys what your thoughts were. Because genuinely, lads, right? You've seen every game that I've played live here. I've uploaded every every single game that I have played, right? And I would say there's only been maybe three or four games where I felt, okay, like there's definitely an issue between the connection between me and my opponent, whether he's playing Wi-Fi or whether it's just a bad server or whether it's just a bad connection. And, you know, that can happen. I play a lot of Warzone and some games, you know, your gun is doing perfect damage and you're hitting all your shots. And another day, um, you know, you're you're basically shooting shooting paper instead of bullets, you know, and it just doesn't register the bullets. So I know it's online gaming and I know that, you know, shit happens and I know that stuff can happen. I don't mind losing the game where I make mistakes. Like, I'll be the first to hold my hands up in that last game and say, yeah, I should have scored maybe five or six more goals in that game. I should have finished him off. I didn't. And he got a couple of lucky breaks. He was also a very good player. And he, he, he you know, he took his chances. Now, for here, I get a bit of luck straight off the rip. I felt a bit sorry for this guy. Um, I got a bit of luck off the rip. And I kind of knew from here that because the way he was defending me and stuff, I knew I'd be able to attack the wings. So that's exactly what I did. Um, I was just going to be as you know direct as I possibly could and try and blow this guy away. Um, especially when I see a couple of long balls going in like that, I was saying, right, get it out to the wings with Neymar. You know, I have enough uh, freedom on the ball. You can see there the difference in the input delay and the no input delay. You can see my passes. I'm waiting till the last second and. 
it's very hard when you play like 100 matches and you play 90, like 95 of them. You see those little, like, little touches and stuff like that. When you're able to do that, it's very hard to not do that when the game isn't reacting to what you're doing. You know what I mean? It's very hard to say, okay, the game is un- a li- this game is a little bit unreactive or this server is a little bit unreactive between your opponent. Switch up the way you play your game after playing you know, 100 hours the same way as you always play. So we do get promotion, lads. This is kind of a back burner thing now here. I just want to do have a chat with you. Um, it is very frustrating. I think that's one be my my biggest biggest frustration is those games that you do get it. And as I said, lads, look, if I can play ninety five games and only have five of them that I'm actually frustrated with, that is massive for me. And I think that this is definitely the best and most enjoyable e football or PES game that I have played one v one since I would say the original MLO. Like I love uh, co op in PES twenty twenty and twenty one. Um, but yeah, so this is the game I wanted to talk to you about, lads, right? So first things first, the guy I'm playing is a very, very good player. Um, he's a really, really good player. There's no no doubt about it that it was a step up in challenge between it, right? But you'll see right from the off, right, that I just had very, very, very weird kind of input delay latency. Um, I don't know why it was. Now, as I said, he was a very, very good player. He scores a really good goal here from the rip, absolutely destroys me full take my hat off to him full credit for that one but i just kind of felt myself that i wasn't i wasn't able to close down i wasn't able to defend like i was trying to keep things as simple as possible because remember i had just come off that loss and then i got the win really quick which was like literally a five minute like less than a five minute game so i was just coming off a loss where i wasn't i wasn't uh, warmed up really um but everything just felt off for me now look you can complain all you want, you can excuses. There's one with Van Dyke. Like I usually stop them out in my tracks, like in like five or six of them a day, you know what I mean? Or a game. Um where you just close the gap, right? And you can look at this and you can complain all you want and you can say, like, yeah, I should have got rid of the ball here, I should have got rid of the ball there. Yeah, I got turned over in possession there, no complaints whatsoever. I win it back, I get the ball back out here at Ronaldino. Now watch this, right? I try to turn back inside here. Now I'm pressing the pass button right here and it doesn't register it, I get turned over in interception, and I'm so, like, I was so confused, right, that I still wasn't concentrated. When I get the ball back here, I tried the first time passes. Now, pass it. Now, you'll see at the end of the video, um, he tucks it away beautifully as well as you would expect a top player to do, but you will see at the end of the video, and don't worry, lads, that's that's not the worst of them to come. Trust me, that's not the worst of them to come. Um, you'll see at the end of the video when I slow it down where exactly I do press it that the power bar does come up. It just seems to be that it was like, okay, the game is saying, okay, I know that you're trying to get past the ball. Um, and you can even see here, like, you know, Vieira, he makes me look like a, a fool here, right? But I just couldn't, I literally could not control. Like, you know, this is a beautiful pass here. And I usually slot these ones away, lads. He does really well here. He calls my bluff, um, which is fair enough. That's a bit of skill from him. But I just could not, like, I, I felt like I couldn't pass the ball. I couldn't have enough time on the ball. Yes, he was closing me down. Like, yes, he was closing me down. But at the same time as well, like, there's not much that you can do when, you know, you're pressing a button and it's not, it's not registering it. And again, it's not excuses. This guy deserved to beat me. He was a much better player, you know, like, but it's very frustrating when you just can't play your own game. You know, I don't mind win, lose or draw if I'm able to play my own game and actually do what I want to do. Like, you can see I'm creating space here. I'm creating, you know, the options. Again, it just wouldn't sit down here for me. Um, and, you know, the craziness started to really happen in the second half. Like, I was coming onto the ball a little bit more um but i just couldn't get that final ball in like i try a little trick here just to be just to be cute but it doesn't work which is fair enough that's my fault again i tried to close the gap here it goes in around me fair enough now watch donnarumma here lads right we're going to rewind that back at the end of the video donnarumma just walks straight past him we'll analyze that at the end as well and again here i get back in i close the gap i try come in with Vieira, and you can see here that like i'm just at sixes and sevens it's bouncing around the place I come in here, make a challenge, and then he gives away a penalty. But it just felt, everything just felt off. It felt like half a second behind. And as I said, I don't want to come on here and be complaining and making excuses. I lost, right? You know, it's it's just one game. You know, we go again. We go again in a minute with another episode. But it was just kind of this summed it up, where I literally had no, like, reaction to anything that I was trying to do. You know what I mean? It was just like, obviously, when you can see the goal like that, you just have to chalk it down and say, yeah, look, it is what it is and have a laugh about it. And that's what I was doing. I wasn't getting angry, really. Um, But when you kind of like look back on it and we will analyze it towards the end of the video, um, yeah, let me me know your guys' thoughts. I mean, obviously, look, you can pick through this gameplay and you can say, yeah, 
you know, I made this mistake or I, I made that mistake. But like, if I'm genuinely trying to turn with Vieira and he's not turning quick enough compared to like a hundred other games that I've played where he turns okay and I'll live with the mistakes I, ca- I, I create myself or I live with the space that I'm being, you know, opening up myself, right? Or if I may- miss a shot, you'll see like in an episode coming up where I miss shot a chance after chance after chance where I have no one to blame but myself. But if I'm pressing pass and the ball isn't passing because there's like a problem with the connection, you know, there's not a lot that I can do, even taking nothing away from this guy who beat me. Do you know what I mean? Nothing away from his skill level. So that leaves us in a very precarious position, lads, going into Division 2. We start with a 6 nil drubbing. And from here, we need eight wins, really, to get up. And it's not looking good for us. So we come up against this guy here. And again, what I talked about in the last episode, this was a very, very, very similar game um, where it was kind of... I won't say like unresponsive, but it was just that a couple of crazy things happening. You'll see, you'll see as the match goes on. And as I said, I had these back to back, right? Where I just felt like I needed to reboot my router or something. It was like, I've just played like seven games in a row, won seven games in a row, perfect. And these two games were just a bit crazy. Now I do get to start off with a brilliant, exquisite goal from Pedri. He should have probably cleared that off the line. Like that's what I'm talking about, that it comes around for you. There's no way he shouldn't have intercepted that and cleared it on the line. I know he was jamming the buttons. And that's why I always say that it comes around. It comes back around on you. That's why I don't get too angry. Because I've won games. Like, this is a brilliant goal. I have won games where I'm, like, scratching my head saying, how did I manage to score that goal there? That's so unfair on him. And I've also lost games, like the last game, where I felt, okay, I'm playing against a really good opponent, taking nothing away from him actually beating me. But there's no way that it should have been 6-0 with some of the goals that I conceded. And this was kind of a mix between last game and a couple of games where things go my way. It was kind of like a completely mixed bag. You can see here, like, he's really end-to-end. He's a really good player. He actually has a similar play style to me in terms of his dribbling, in terms of, excuse me, his movement. Um, But it was was kind of a game where I felt that I could really punish him with, uh, with the wing play. And as you see... Diaz here ripping it up the wing. The touching goals are very hard to, to, to defend. And Romario is obviously a cheat code, lads. He's just unbelievable. He gets lucky there with De Jong cutting in, um, which is really, really nice play from him. And again, he's on his break here. He's trying to flick and trick his way into another goal or a goal to get back in the lead. But for me, I just felt a little bit more comfortable in this game. Even though there was a couple of crazy things happening and a couple of stuff that you'll see coming up, I felt like I was getting a couple of breaks, you know what I mean? You can see here Ronaldinho, I tried to get the ball in, get the ball across, and that should have been a goal. That's my own fault. It was a bad, bad uh, shot from me. Again, here I'm on the wing. I take on Carlos, beat him for pace with Munain as normal because Munain is an absolute freak. Get the ball in here with Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho is going to cut this inside. Cut it in. Get the, get a bit of luck, but I can't get the finish. And as I said, lads, on another day, I would be scoring you know, three or four times with this. You'll see in a lot of the, the games that I play, I usually score a chance if I get it because I'm not the best player and I'm not the most aggressive player. So I kind of pride myself on that if I get a chance, like a good chance, I usually slot it home. And if I get half a chance, I, I make a good stab at it. You know what I mean? But in these two games that I played, this one and the last one, it just felt like it was very, very hard for me to actually get the ball in the back of the net because I just felt like anything I tried, finesse shots here, um, you know, first time passing, um, going my wing play, everything just felt a little bit kind of labored and a bit kind of erratic. So again, you can see here at Munayin, lads, again, like it's just a weak shot outside of the foot. Fair enough, we take that. I should have put more power in it and I can analyze that and say, yeah, that was my fault. And you can own that mistake and say, yeah, if I had that chance back again, knowing that I hit it too soft, you can hit it too hard. But in the real time, you are going to make mistakes. There is again, that's a terrible pass from me. No excuses whatsoever. That's my own fault. I nearly get punished for it. And then I do get punished for it, which is completely my fault. I'll own any of those mistakes, lads. I will own anything like that. I play it across the net. He slide tackles. He's a smart player. No complaints whatsoever. No complaints whatsoever. Even though there was a bit of input delay, I have no complaints. That's my totally my own fault, right? So I own that. I'm not going to have a moan about that one. But from this game on, I just felt like I could get back into it. Like, I never felt like the last game where I was completely, like, out of my depth or anything like that. Um, because I was getting the chance to be on the ball. And even though there was a slight bit of delay on it, it wasn't as bad as the last game where, like, look at this here. Like, this is just a bit of a craziness. That happened two or three times where it was like goal mouth scrambles. But this game really kicked into gear in the second half, lads. You can see there was only two goals uh, scored by him in the first half. And he gets straight from the rip. He has a beautiful finish from the kickoff. 
right into the top corner poor defending from me and i was 3-1 down and we're in a bad bad position here we've already lost our first game in division two we can't really lose this game right so from the tip off here romario with a bit of magic he slots it home hits the post and in and we're right back in this game 3-1 to 3-2 romario being the hero again i'm gonna leave this gameplay play because there was a really nice ebb and flow to this game there was mistakes there was miss good defending there was bad defending there was good space being exploited and good chances taken again straight from the tip off lads it was just that sort of game right he bangs it in gets his two goal lead back and usually look I, you know, I had kind of accepted. When you get a two-goal lead in eFootball, right, usually you hold on because, you know, there isn't enough time for you to get back and actually be able to produce, you know, a winner or whatever, unless you start to dominate or unless you start to get a couple of chances because I knew that this guy was going to get at least one more solid, solid chance and maybe, maybe another after that, like a, a pretty decent chance, right? So I had to take every chance that I got from here on in if I was even going to get a draw of it and keep the dream alive of back to 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 back promotion. But it wasn't looking good. This guy was a really good player. He had a really good team. He was playing in a nice style of football. And there was a couple of issues with the input play. But once I started to kind of go attacking and once I started to kind of change things up a bit, I made a lot more mistakes, but we did start to get a little bit more of a foothold in the game. I started to be more aggressive in defending and kind of take a couple of risks. Brilliant tackle here from Van Dijk to start us off. Spread it out wide to our R10, Ronaldinho, and he's going to just run it. He kind of overcommitted to me. Now we've got the overlap. We just need to get it out to Money. Money eats those alive all day. And then I just start, decided to switch it up. Nearly get back into it. That would have been a lovely lobbed header from Romario. Um, and lads, I think Romario is definitely the best player I've used by a mile. He's absolutely incredible. So he started to get a little bit erratic with his passes here. It's all one-touch passing. Um, obviously playing a three-bar pass assist as far as I know. I picked the pass at Munayin and from cutting in here, Munayin, beautiful little finish. De Jong couldn't get over in time and that's what Money can do, lads. He is the main man when Corona's down on that right flank and Money gets us in back into the game. So it's 4-3 and this guy is just going to go straight. So I decide to press him and push him with Vieira. Vieira gets everything in the way, his arse, everything. And then we're true on goal with Diaz. Lovely finish. Look at that for beautiful, beautifulness from Diaz. He is an absolute demon on the wings. But he's so good feet, like his feet are so good, lads. So just like that, in 30 seconds, I'm back from 4-2 down to 4-all with a moment of magic and a beautiful finish from Munayin. And again, that's what happens when you can actually keep patient with the game and the actual like input delay isn't as bad. And I get a chance straight from the rip here again. This guy, I think, was a little bit uh, frustrated, probably a little bit rattled. I probably should have turned in with Romero, used my body balance a little bit more there. But... We'll take that and we go on again. Again, he had a brilliant chance here. As I said, lads, we knew he was going to get chances. He takes that again. He gets a bit unlucky. We missed one like that very, very early in the game. Lovely ball back in and he can't finish. This guy was a really good player. I really enjoyed playing against him. Um, and I would have been happy with the draw. I was kind of thinking to myself, look, if I can just rescue a draw here, I know I was up, but then I was down by two goals. And to come back from two goals down is pretty, pretty decent. So I knew this guy was good and I knew that we were very evenly matched. But I also felt like I could start getting on the wings a bit more, right? So I decided to just kind of like really, really, really utilize the wings a little bit uh, better and try and, you know, like support the wings as best that I could. And Diaz is the man for that, right? So I try cut inside here, get a bit of luck, but Kyle Walker cuts me off cross. And then from here, he's on the break again. Now I have Paddy V back in an anchoring position, right? And I was trying to kind of limit the amount of chances he was going to be getting through with... Um, with you know that he could finesse shot or whatever and i didn't mind keeping him on the outside foot there shooting obviously i don't want any shots going in but i kind of felt like the only way i was going to catch this guy was if he had committed forward and then i catch him on the counter attack because he was very very good defender once he was set but what about that for a pick out from pedri and there's five four and we're about to steal a victory here lads i think we're about to do it and we're about to kick off division two with an absolute robbery and a huge game to win because romario and um Pedri have combined Diaz has been excellent on the wing we've had a moment of magic from him we've had a moment of magic from Munayin and when you need the big players to step up lads it's not all about the fancy names it's not all about the Neymars it's not all about anybody like that or the Mbappes it's about the guys that have that bit between their teeth and that's what big lads FC are all about but he gets offside here and from this attack I'm just thinking to myself okay do I go kind of five at the back do I change to my sub tactic 
is this guy going to really press me here? So I decided, right, I'm going to keep it around the back. I'm not obviously going to sweat it across because I don't play like that. It is a game just at the end of the day. But I kind of felt like he had to come forward. Now, I get a bit of a lucky break here. Corona steps inside. And from here, Corona is a demon of a player. And we do get that bit of luck. But we don't, we're not able to finish it right there. And Corona gets back in again and, and finishes the game. Now, when I talked about in the last episode, right, that you do get, you do, it comes around, right? If you're going to say that you're going to lose every game because of a certain reason, that means that you have to win every game because of a certain reason. You know what I mean? It can't be one or the other, you know? So I accept that there are games, as I said, did I deserve to beat this guy 6-4? Probably not. Did I deserve to lose to this guy definitely not like i think that it would probably would have been a fair result if me and him had drawn four all or maybe five all um but i don't think that he could really complain because i think that i was probably a goal to the good on him but i think he could have been a goal to the good on me as well if he had got a couple of lucky breaks because that's what that's what it comes down to you win some you lose some you'll have some games where you just feel like you can't do any wrong you'll have some games where you feel like you can't do any right and I think that when you win a game, it can't just be because the other player got screwed. It has to be because you were better than him. You know, or a mixture of you having a better team, defending better, getting a couple of breaks, and, you know, being a better player. When you lose games, it can't just be because, you know, you were absolutely screwed and you didn't deserve to lose it. I've had games like that. I just complained all episode about that one where I felt like a really hard done by. But at the same time, I've had games where I've lost fair and square, like at the beginning of this episode as well. So, um, you know, is there issues with the game in terms of the latency and in terms of, you know, swings and stuff that, that happen? Yeah, but as in every game, you know, I think that you can, you can, um, you can always, like, it comes back around, you know what I mean? As you've seen in this game. I got two lucky breaks to come into this game to, to get me back into this game and to, to get a win out of it. Like, <clears throat> I think I really deserved... <clears throat> excuse me i think i really deserved the win in this game but i do think that as well that it, it has a lot to do with it that like you know when the more games that you play the more stuff that you're going to see and every game has like issues you know that you're you're combining like it's it's between you know as i said at the in another episode or another video that i did right if you have got 500 meg broadband or a thousand meg broadband um, download speed and 200 meg upload speed where you're thinking oh my connection is flawless and you match up with somebody who's playing on an 8 meg wi-fi connection like you're going to be playing the game on his terms in terms of like the game is going to have to you know obviously be playable for him and for you so your 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 kind of speed is irrelevant really if you look at it that way it's the same with warzone right i play a lot of warzone and if you get a bad host in warzone say i'm playing against like some of my american friends and i'm on their host my ping will be like, you know, 120, 130 um, ping, which like means that like I'm going to have less reaction. I'm going to have less, um, you know, somebody could be turned the corner and get a shot off of me before I have my gun drawn or aim down sights. So I know I've gone off a bit tan on a tangent here now, but I did genuinely just want to have a chat with you guys in a bit of a catch up. Um, so that is our first result in season uh, or in, um, yeah, in the second division. And I think that it was definitely needed. I mean, if we'd, if we'd scraped a draw there, it would have been good as well. But I think getting the full three points against a good player where I was down 4-2 to come back and win 6-4 was absolutely massive. So, yeah, I was absolutely buzzing with that. I was just so happy with that one. Um, and we're going to take a quick look. So we've got three points now from two games. I think if we win maybe our next three or four, um, I think we can actually do, you know, we could do a bit of damage in this division. Will I be able to get up the division? I haven't been relegated yet. It's not off to the best start, obviously, but I haven't been relegated yet from the divisions. Can I can I continue to 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 go up? I think we've only lost, um, including that one there, the six nil uh to Celtic. I think we've only lost about four games or five games. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think that's all that we've kind of lost and drawn maybe one or two. Um so we are kind of winning games if if we're able to uh, if we're able to get a foot in the game at all. But as I said at the start of the video, lads, I want to go back over a couple of clips that I saw that I showed you at the start, where we're talking about you know the difference between mistakes like this, which is my total error, compared to this is what I was explaining. Now you'll see here you're saying yeah yeah pass 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 pass. Trust me, I'm I'm playing and passing the same way as I've always passed. The there, there, there. I don't know if Corona coming into the animation has affected that, but you'll see the same with Ronaldinho here. 
instead of me taking a touch there, I wanted a first time pass. You can see the meter coming up with the right foot. I know his player position isn't set and stuff, and that could be one that's debatable, but you'll see the same here with Donnarumma, right? Look at this. I didn't press Donnarumma. Donnarumma goes from clapping his hands clapping his hands right as you'll see here and not being set for the ball as if to say yeah come on i'm ready to me not pressing triangle and he just runs in a straight line as if he's taking on usain bolt in a hundred meter sprint he looks to run straight out and forgets that there's a ball there so yeah stuff like that obviously is frustrating but let me guys know your thoughts because um you know obviously i want to know what you guys are, are are seeing what you guys are playing what your experiences are like mine have been genuinely even with everything i'm saying here mine have been overwhelmingly positive this year in terms of the connection i've had no bad real connection games i've had a couple of games where i'm focusing on here now with the input delay and uh, stuff like that the responsiveness issues but in terms of maybe like we're talking what five out of 195 positive games so yeah let me know your thoughts lads and uh we can have a chat about it the next day as well episode 17 will be up tonight double episode as we get through the divisions because season one is now nearing an end but yeah that is it for me i'll talk to you later lads don't forget to like favorite and subscribe peace